Hello, I'm Scott, and today we're going to be looking at Mario Kart Racing Deluxe, a toy by Epoch Games. Uh, this is certainly not the first Mario Kart toy that Epoch has made. They've made a few, uh, still swimming around on places like eBay. You can occasionally find these, um, these ones with slightly different boards. They're all variations on the same theme, really, with lots of different obstacles. But these roll balls around. The difference with the newer ones being that you actually get characters to play with. So this has been around for about sort of best part of two years, I think now, which is pretty cool. What has just appeared in the shops, and I picked it up earlier this week, are these little expansion packs where you get two more different characters. So we'll look at those in a little bit. So firstly, let's open it up and see what's inside the box. It's, I've obviously already opened this. It normally looks quite nice with the uh, Mario and Luigi figures in there, but let's see what's inside and put it together. So as you can see, it all comes in lots of bits. Box can go over there. Whoever chose grey for the base plate, I think there's somebody should have a word quite frankly, because it's not the most inspiring of colours. However, it does help to highlight the red and green accents that we've got here. So first thing we do is we put the bits of the base plate together like that. And then what we need to do is we put the ramps on. So firstly, we stick this one here like that. When you first receive it, you'll get to do a lot of stickering as well, which is never my favourite job, but um, it can give it a certain bit of character for sure. The stickers on here have been pretty good, actually. There's been no peeling at all in the sort of 18 months since I've owned it. And then finally, we stick this rampy bit in there. And it goes under there like that. Kind of slots in there. There we go. There's just one more bit as well. You don't obviously get a plastic bag from Sainsbury's in it, but... Uh, I'm keeping everything. We have an extra bit of ramp here which goes suddenly in there because otherwise they're not going to go around the corner. There we go. And then finally we have the toys themselves. So we'll get a little bit of a close-up on those in a second. So here we have the board in all its glory and the key things that we need are going to be the little characters. So as you can see there's Mario really nicely molded in you know there's no mistaking that for a Mario Kart is there. As you can see, he's got a ball bearing in the bottom that'll help the whole thing run. And we can look at Luigi as well. Here's the little Luigi figure. So they are entirely separate mouldings, which is nice. You know, Luigi is a little bit um, taller. Mario's a little bit squat, a little bit wider. So very easy to tell the two apart, as well as the obvious colouring as well. So in order to set up, what we're going to do is we're going to flick this all the way to the start. I've never quite worked out where we start, actually, um, but let's uh, give it a go. Oof. I think we start. Let's start them there, because I think that makes the most sense. So you can see that we have controls along the bottom. These are matched by, if I just swivel the whole thing round, these are matched on exactly the other side. I don't think there's any major disadvantage in being Luigi. This bit here is actually quite annoying. Um, I'm not a big fan of the cardboard inserts. Yes, they add a little bit of flavour, but in reality... <laughs> I mean, you know, that will bend a few times and then it's going to go in the bin. So we're going to chuck that over there for the moment. What we have got in this board is some nice little bit of decos as well. We've got a nice little Bowser oil, bullet bill, speed trial. Um, you know, so a few flavour adding stickers. We've got, you know, quite frankly, various stickers that could have come off any old sticker sheet that we seem to have jammed on here as well. You know, the colours are pretty good overall. As I said, I don't like the grey base plate, I think that's a little bit dull, um, but there's no mistaking it's going to be a Mario Kart game. So we've got a number of different obstacles. We've got the, uh, there's no good name, so the flippy flappy bit, tilty tilty bit, jugger to jugger to jugger bit. There's a lift, there's a wiggly bit, there's a <laughs> bit as well. So I think six different obstacles overall, one, two, three, four, five, six. What you can see here is the, uh, the lap counter, and that will change. I will if we push him down the ramp, you'll see that it will click up so that every single time you go around a lap, then the lap counter goes so you can tell who's won. And eventually we will have the goal. So that's quite a nice way of measuring it because quite frankly, it all gets a little bit crazy when you're playing the game. So it's really good to be able to keep track of how, um, of how far through you are. So let's have a little bit of a walk through now on the different obstacles within the game. The first one is the clickety clickety bit, um, very much like a screwball scramble one, this actually. So 
nice and easy. I don't think really you can go too wrong. Unlike Scrooble Scramble, you can't go backwards. So, you know, you've just got to get over the bridge. The next one is this tilted bit there. I mean, once again, not a huge amount of rocket science. We then get to the bits where you have to do quite a bit of waggling. So, uh, uh, there we go. And it'll roll around there. So quite nice and easy. We then lift up. Whoop. What you can see here is a couple of things. Firstly, it doesn't always go around perfectly smoothly, which is a bit irritating. Secondly, because they're spinning on a ball bearing, there's no real track to speak of. They can end up going backwards quite a bit. I think it's best just to get over that particular aspect of things. But once again, this is a bit annoying. So it occasionally does require a little bit of effort. If I was to roll that forwards, he just about makes it. But the way that he comes off the lift, he kind of the ball bearing needs to align properly with it. So that's a little bit annoying to be fair. I think there's going to be a lot of instances um, where you're playing this and you need to just do a little bit of alignment, a little bit of a nudge with your fingers. This is quite straightforward again. So it's a little bit of a oh, wiggle, 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 and he goes down. Now, this is not a game to be played with anybody sleeping in your house. And I'm going to demonstrate why this is in a second, because this is one of the noisiest toys, non-mechanical non toys, I've had the benefit to come across. So it sort of shunts it up with a springy motion. There we go. And we've done a lap. So let's see now if we can make a little bit of a race. There's only one of me, um, but uh, let's see if we can actually get the two to race together and see if we can get around the entire lap, hopefully without too much uh, bother. So here we go. Oh, Mario is obviously in the lead. I can't do two things at once. Push down there. They're both there, which is good. The waggling, waggling. Oh, Mario's definitely behind. Unfortunately, Mario's going to lose. He's going to have to wait. Now, Mario's gotten, oh no, he's gotten stuck because I was doing the wrong one. Sort of like a teeth. I'll show you a closer example in it. There we go. That's got him round. Come on, Mario, get on with it. Once again, an example of having to push it a little bit. Both of them are going to lift up. Go on here, back onto here. Right, let's get you round. I think I'm favouring Luigi a bit at the moment. Mario's just annoying me. Here we go. And on to, once again, the loud bit. Once again, if you're sending kids to their rooms to play this, you're going to hear it still. So. It's quite satisfying where we go. And then we've done a lap. Now you have to do that five times and you're good. So you can see that there is quite a strong, nice race element within the game. Yes, you know, there's a couple bits where I think that the slopes could probably be a little bit steeper to make sure to facilitate the, um, the rolling thing. But broadly, you know, it does work really quite well. There we go. He's acting much more friendly now. This bit, as I said, is a very tricky bit. Let me, um, let me just adjust so you can see what's actually going on actually on that last bit, on that last bit. So as you can see here, there's just these two, um, two large strips of plastic, but as we click, it sort of pulls them back a bit and then shifts them forwards. And because there are teeth here, it'll catch the cars on their way up. So you can't just use any old thing on here. You know, these cars have been specially adapted. So let's just, let's chuck both Mario and Luigi down there and you can kind of see how we're going to go. I'll just use Luigi for a second. So once he's on, it's good. And in general, they're going up. I think it works really quite well. As I said, it's the noisiest part of the game by far, but I think it's quite a lot of fun. So that's probably the game in itself. It's a good, it's a two player game. And that I think is making things a lot more exciting because there's a competitive element to it. For once you're not racing against a clock, but you're actually racing against each other. So that's the main game. Now this is a expansion piece that I picked up the other day, which has two different characters in it. Now you'll see on the front of the box here, it's indicating as per the Mario Kart game that you've got the Toad, who's light, and Bowser, who is heavy. Now technically in the Mario Kart game, the light characters, you know, they accelerate much more easily, but their top speed is lower and they tend to turn a bit faster. Whereas the heavy characters, you know, they're much harder to corner, um, but their top speed is much higher. So we're gonna see if that's at all relevant in this particular game. I quite like the fact that they're just separate characters, but uh, let's have a look and see what's going on. So what's inside this particular box here? So we have the two characters and let's have a bit of a closer look up on them. So here's Toad, you know, very nicely molded, exactly the same cart, but he's, you know, he's kind of short. There we go, he's in focus there. 
And then the Bowser, who is quite frankly an absolutely brilliant mold. Everybody likes Bowser anyway, but really nice. And you can feel that there's a bit of a weight difference. I mean, the size of the ball bearing is probably what's making the difference there. You can see there is a difference there. Um, let's just compare with the ball bearings on the bottom of here. So fractionally bigger, the ball bearing is making the difference. Let's see if the whole thing makes a difference to the playing of the game now. You've also been given these little things here, which the box is showing me kind of goes um, on the side. I don't know if you can see this image at the bottom, which is where, I don't know, maybe we could try that out and see if it fits in, but you know, they'll just tab in underneath. Yeah, it doesn't look very exciting. I'm not particularly excited by it, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Oh, oh, look, they live under there. Wow. I mean, I don't know. It, has, it certainly hasn't added anything to my experience of the game. Anyway, I'm going to leave those off for the moment. But let's see if it actually makes a difference to the whole thing, and quite frankly, whether you should bother getting them. So let's do, firstly, a Bowser versus Mario. Bowser's obviously more of the Luigi character, so let's chuck him in on the Luigi side. So I'm not sure there'll be too much of a difference, but let's see if it shouldn't make a difference there. I think I'm sensing a little bit more speed. Oh, hang on. I'm pressing the wrong one again. He does go under, luckily. It'd be a shame if they hadn't given, even given him the clearance that he needed. It's definitely harder in this bit. Oh. Requires a lot of waggling back and forth. Right, let's see if it's actually going to work at all. First time I've tried this, and it would be a shame if it didn't work. Maybe there's a technique. Oh, it's gone back to the beginning. That's less good. You'd think that's been play tested, so there we go. He is going. Okay, it requires a different technique. Oh, okay, well that was hard work, wasn't it? Mario Kart, Mar oh, sorry, Mario, much easier. Right, okay, that was an ordeal. Mario rolls. Bowser's definitely going a little bit more quickly on some of these, so, you know, maybe that's an advantage if you can get the technique right on that back bit. Oh, Bowser's switched around. Let's change him around just so it looks nicer. And then up the noisy bit. Mario's been useless. Let's just get them both to the top. And then we'll see how they race down the bottom. Right, that's probably about enough. Oh, come on, Mario. Come on. I was doing the wrong thing again. It's hard when you play against yourself. So Mario's managed to hit the corner there. It seems, just from eyeballing it, Bowser does have a speed advantage. So maybe, they, you know, that's certainly got something going on there. Right, well, you know, that's them. I mean, it's fun. I do like the Bowser character anyway. Let's test out Luigi versus Toad. Right, once again, let's do another lap. Hopefully that other bit will be easier. Oh no, Toad's come right off with this power of the spring. Let's see if that's gonna work again or not. I have a feeling this was clearly designed for the Mario and Luigi characters rather than the others. Right. Up, 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 up we go. Toad much easier than Bowser, I'll tell you that. There we go, he's off and over. There we go, it's working quite well now. Waggle, 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 and they're up to the thing. And now we're going to... Oh, I mean, Toad runs pretty well. Let's just have a look at that again and see. Well, Toad runs faster than Luigi as well, which is completely counter to expectations, but there we go. So, overall, we've got our four races. Well, let me move that back. We've got our four races and we've got the board. You've seen exactly how it works. It's a neat little piece of kit. So now you've seen it all in action. What do we think of it? Well, firstly, it's a two player game. That is, I think, really very unusual in these marble obstacle course type games. Obviously, you know, it could just be a marble that you're rolling around there, but the fact that they've included the races in, and indeed now we've got four different ones to choose from, I think makes this a really different sort of game, a really enjoyable game. And, you know, that's a real positive. 
The converse, however, is the fact that if you don't have anybody to play it with, uh, it's a bit less exciting. Look, you know, I can very happily just zip Luigi around the course and that's fun and I can still make him go round. And yeah, that's kind of enjoyable, but it doesn't have quite so many of the obstacles that many of the other marble type games have. You know, it's only got five different ones in total. And so, you know, if you're going for a single player experience, Typical. This may not necessarily be the one, but as a two player experience, and if you're willing to do the occasional little finger nudge around there, which is probably caused by the fact they have got the carts, um, but if they didn't have the uh, carts, then they wouldn't be able to go up this lift, for example, then, you know, I think that's something to consider. Overall, I think it's a really positive uh, piece of kit. It, it's retailing about somewhere between 20 and 30 pounds at the moment. Um, I think that 20, 25 pounds is, is well worth it if you're looking for a two player sort of experience. This expansion pack cost 10 pounds. So given that that is, you know, almost half the price of the toy itself, you've got to really like it. Don't buy this without having bought this and enjoying it first is my strong recommendation. Um, but otherwise, this is a, you know, this is an unusual recommend from me um, for two players specifically. The Mario theming is really nice. And I think that there's a lot to be gained for two players. But as I said, it's very, very loud. And I can hear this all the way through my house. Um, so just be a little bit conscious about that. This is not something that a kid is going to play quietly with in their room. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. Um, I've got some other reviews of Epoch uh, games, the Mario games as well. So please go have a look at those. And thank you very much.